She quickly removes herself from me to answer the phone on her desk. Her tone shifts from playful to professional in the span of a few seconds. Today? Not a problem, ma'am. I could bring you a copy of the contract if... <laughs> Must be another client. Nothing surprising there. She's one of BRC's top agents, no matter how modest she appears. A saleswoman through and through. I, on the other hand, have very little knack for it. Of course, I learned eventually... I had to. But someone else will, without a doubt, do a better job. Once, though, in a drunken stupor, Rose told me a story of what could have been. Years ago, wide-eyed, young, and brimming with yet-to-be fulfilled dreams and ambitions, she was a term or two away from a nursing degree. Out of courtesy, I never pressed, I never pressed on the matter further. But perhaps it's where the sins of fondness started. A small connection due to one similar experience in our respective lives. Of goals we both let pass us by because of circumstances we're in. I'd be happy to discuss this over tea, ma'am. All right, I'll be there. Thank you. New client? Reassigned. Have you heard from Mark at all? Not since the first visit to the mansion. Why? No news from the HR yet? None at all. Boss thinks he ran away. I doubt it, though. He's too much of a wimp for that. There must be another reason. <sighs> Who knows? Anyway, I've got to meet this one. I'll see you later. She throws a wave over her shoulders as she rushes out of the office. The lunchtime bell sounds shortly after, followed by the chatter of fellow... Uh, agents also heading out for a much needed break. Ordinarily, there's no need for me to go out. But oversleeping didn't allow me the luxury of packing my own lunch today. If one considers taking an instant noodle cup from my pantry, packing your lunch. Time to make good on that promise I made Becca, I suppose. Maybe invite Zack and Ash, too? Let's save. In the end, only Becca and Zack could come. Ash, on the other hand, couldn't be reached. All of my calls went straight to his voicemail. He's at it again. Right here today. Gone the next. Oh well, his loss. We have agreed to meet at a nearby cafe. Same one I frequent with Becca because it's cheap and they give away free bread around closing time. Quaint. A little old-fashioned, though looks a wee bit out of place amidst the city's tall buildings. But we love it all the same. Much like its facade, the interior carries an in antiquated charm to it. Vintage art pieces and a row of shelves boasting an extensive collection of books cover the walls. It would have been nice to hang out here for hours on end, but even on a weekend, the place is still packed with people. Thankfully, Becca and Zack have already found seats and are engaged in some casual chatter when I arrive. It's strange seeing the two of them without Ash accompanying the other. They've never been particularly close. Sure, they talk when they meet, Laugh at the same things when there's something funny. But there's distance. The kind born purely out of differing interests. That or Zack simply afraid of Becca. It's not impossible, and I won't blame him if he is. He might be the tallest in our group, but everyone knows that it means nothing against Becca's temper. Even I am a little scared of her. Zack! Becca! Well, you seem to be in a better mood today. What happened? I know that smile, Belle. Come on, still. D don't rush me. Let's order food first, okay? A waitress comes by to take our order. On a normal day, me and Becca will order a hearty serving of their special vegetarian stovies. 
Zack takes anything with a good helping of meat, sausages, or potatoes in it. But today's a good day. Great, even. It's not wrong to indulge a little, right? Today's special. For the three of us. Even the person jotting down our order looks surprised at today's menu choice. She writes it, nevertheless, and leaves without a comment. Becca furrows her eyebrows, her mouth halfway open, ready to let loose what's likely a string of reprimands. Don't worry, it's my treat. The glare she sends my way reminds me of the one I received from Mama when I punched a kid bullying my younger brother 18 years ago. Naturally, I never did it again after she made me apologize the next day. But Becca's far from being my mom. A small, sheepish grin is enough to turn that frown into a defeated sigh. Food arrives in the middle of a funny story from Jack, uh, from Zack. Putting the rest of the conversation on hold as we are each served our order. It isn't anything fancy. Pan roasted sea bass with citrus dressed asparagus and a portion of mashed potatoes on the side. Or at least that's what the daily specials board says. I never did pay attention to it whenever I come here since they price whatever's written way above what I'm willing to spend on food on a single day. Oh, good. I'm so hungry, I think I'm dying. You're always hungry. Hey, not all the time. <laughs> Let me guess, you skipped breakfast again. Not on purpose. I may have overslept by a few seconds today. Right then. Stop stalling, Isabella. What's this about? <laughs> Let us say, Rebecca. She wouldn't be inviting us out if it wasn't worth hearing out. Well, we're waiting. I'm treating you guys to a once-in-a-century thing! An expected grin breaks out on my face. Except... I I'm sorry, say that again. And this is important because... Becca only raises an eyebrow at me, while Zack appears like he didn't didn't get the punchline to another lame joke like he didn't get the punchline to another lame joke Ash made and is desperately searching for someone to explain it oh bummer maybe I should rephrase it my instant noodle days are over or Ash is not here we should celebrate <laughs> oh man uh, noodle days are over I just say that cake looks awesome. The cake. This display shelves. Is that a cake? The second row on the. Shelf. Oh, this. Yeah. Oh, I was looking at that. I was like, "Are you sure that's a cake?" It's a cake. I don't know. It looks so weird. It looks like cloth, like wrapped around something it looks circular. So good. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so instant noodle days are over. Okay, let me do that again. Guess what, guys? I'm paying! I sold the house! As the news sinks in, their expression goes from sheer bewilderment to utter surprise. That's more like it. You heard me right, ladies and gentlemen. As of today, I, Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos, am free from my instant noodle binge. Seriously? Hold it, Belle. You sold the house? Yep. Which house is this? In Anslem Village? The one with the open house yesterday? The one and only. Come on, Becca. I know you've got a better memory than that. Oh. Oh, wow. That's... She lets out a hum. Although she's nodding, she gives the impression of someone who has heard something unbelievable and is still forcing her brain to absorb it. Did she think we wouldn't be able to sell it? Have some faith in me, Becca. Am I not your best friend or what? You don't believe me? The words tumble out of my mouth before I could stop them. 
I've been trying to avoid bringing up yesterday's little spat. Judging from the looks on their faces, it seems they are too. Me and my stupid mouth. I'm sure it ain't the way you're thinking, Bella. No, no, I do believe you. But don't you think the sale happened a bit too fast? The open house only started yesterday, and now you already have a buyer? It happens from time to time. Yeah, but... Look, I'm happy for you. Just yesterday, you've been really worried where to get money for your dad's new treatment. And now, all of a sudden, you have something. W what if the sale doesn't push through, or I don't know, they're a fraud, or they suddenly back out? Isn't it a little too early to celebrate? Rebecca does have a point, Bella. If you haven't closed the deal yet, there's still a chance they'll go back on it. Mm, they don't seem like it to me. The lady appeared to really want it, and she approached me without even finishing the tour. Pressured me into it, more like. But I'm not gonna tell Rebecca about that. Knowing her, she'd only worry. And she already hired someone to handle the house's interior design. You're joking. Who would do that? The rights, apparently. It's actually pretty funny. She's a bit too excited to get the property. She forgot to buy it. At any rate, they've already signed the agreement today, so it's just a matter of time. And don't tell anyone about this, but Ma'am Hannah also gave us something extra. Something as in... As in, it's why I can treat you two to a free meal. I'm more surprised you accepted it. She didn't really give us a choice in the matter. So don't lose sleep over this, okay? The couple really want the house. If Rose didn't stop them, they'd likely have paid up front for it yesterday. That's despite the legends, too. I even tried to show them the letter. But nope. I want this house, darling. Go take all our money. You don't really think they'd believe that, do you? I'm pretty sure for them, those are just rumors as well. No one is that superstitious in this day and age, Belle. Well, there's you. Right. You know what? I'll just eat all of these by myself. I begin to gather their plates to my side, the food in each still untouched. A laugh almost escapes my mouth with the way Zack's expression quickly changes to disappointment. Becca's hand interrupts me just as I'm about to pull her plate closer to me. <laughs> I'm kidding! Don't go all pouty on me again! I'm just concerned you'll get hurt if this doesn't happen. I know how badly you want to close this deal for your papa. I'm sure he's gonna be fine now, though, with the money. They don't know yet. I think I'll call them tomorrow. Let them know things will be easier. Mama said this morning he's showing progress with the new treatment, too. It's just a matter of time. I allow myself to smile, genuine and uninhibited. It's strange talking about this with other people. Even though, even those who have known you long enough. But today, things simply feel a whole lot lighter with them here. Lunch passes in an enjoyable fashion. A laugh here, a playful jab there. But most of it is spent on catching up and telling stories about whatever is keeping us busy these days. Something we couldn't afford to do the day before, taking into account what happened. Even Becca's surprisingly chatty. Is there something in the sea bass we ate? Zack, though, appears less energetic. While he's far from being the life of a party, he's definitely not the type to keep quiet in a conversation with his friends. Apart from a few inputs, he's been silent the entire time. If Becca notices- Are you sure you're not feeling under the weather, Zachary? Huh? What? No, I I'm okay. No, no worries, Rebecca. Doesn't sound okay to me. It's... It, it's it's okay. I might be feeling a little bummed out today, but but I'm, I'm sure this will pass. Is it about the reviews this morning? A pained expression crosses Zack's face, and almost immediately, Becca retreats in her inquiry. As though the man's look is enough of an answer for her. I look between the two of them. Did I miss something? What happened this morning? 
Did I stumble on a big secret? This is why I don't like waking up late. You heard about those, huh? Sorry, I just happened to check on some sites this morning. Nah, no, nah, it's it's it, it's a very sensitive topic in the first place. I, I should have expected it. What reviews? Becca glances at Zack. Her emotions unsure, eyes asking for his consent on the matter. Although there's a small desire to keep asking on my part, I don't dare voice it out. With Zack, it has always been better to wait. Let him speak on his own. Becca, too, to some extent, although with her explosions of temper are more common. In the end, he simply answers with a shift of his shoulders, gesturing for her to go on with a tilt of his head. It's his movie. That doesn't explain anything. Stop dangling the information, Becca! Zachary, I'm not the one supposed to be telling her about this. It's still your documentary. Is it something bad? Not bad, per se. You, you guys don't need to dwell on it much. Bad? Listen here! I wouldn't trivialize what those bowheads wrote if I were you. They're ruining other people's jobs! From how her tone rises in anger, it seems like she's the one slighted and not sad. <laughs> A snicker escapes me, which I promptly stamp down uh, as soon as she sends me a hard look. This isn't a laughing matter, Isabella. Some bow bag just insulted him. Calm down, Rebecca. Those are just reviews, and it happens a lot. <sighs> I do not care about you two, but calling the entire film an out-and-out -out drivel, you're better off watching an educational kids' TV show, and worst one and a half hour of my life, among other things, isn't exactly a critique any decent movie reviewer would say. <laughs> if you could call that a critique, did we even watch the same film? Well, maybe I ain't cut out for it. Better stick with my photography or something. If nothing else, this helped me open my eyes to what I can and can't do. You're giving up. It wasn't a question. It was just something experimental I did on my free time anyway. It's, it's no big deal. But you worked on it for months! Doesn't look like it matters for those people. Don't say that! <laughs> my palm strikes the table, sending the tableware on top clinking against each other. I didn't even notice when I rose from my seat. But here I am, chest heaving looking down at him in the same manner a teacher would at an unruly student. Becca's probably proud. I didn't mean to yell, but there are some things people like Zack aren't supposed to say. How exasperating. He, of all people, should know. It's just a review! Except they're pretty well-known critics. Why does that matter? They aren't the ones calling the shots on this. Isn't that why they have a committee? Right, Becca! An amused gleam is in her eyes when I turn to her. What does she find so entertaining here? Help me here. Your friend's about to quit his passion for a petty reason. I haven't read what those people wrote about his work. A few scathing words shouldn't be enough to discourage someone. I should know. After all, I'm... Failing means you're playing, Zack. Uh, not that I'm saying it's bad. I've seen it from start to finish, and I know for myself what you created isn't something people should scoff at. I don't know anything about filming or photography. Hell, I don't have an inkling of artistry in me except for those doodles I make for class. But I know what I watched. Look at Isabella. It's not every day you see her all riled up like this. Whatever I'm about to say gets lost in my tongue as a flash of embarrassment blooms across my face. It was a heat of the moment thing. And anyway, I'll be very angry with you if you quit. What about the exhibit? What exhibit? Classified information. Even if I bring you your favorite tonight? Nope, not a chance. Oh, come on. I thought we aren't supposed to have secrets. 
<laughs> Thanks, you two. Uh, I might need some time alone to myself for a while. Just to think about things, how I'll go from here, that sort of stuff. Hey, I'm not quitting, Bella. Don't give me that face. There's no face at all. Only a poor imitation of a puppy dog eyes, if you could call this one. Promise? I'll be damned if I break any promise I make to you guys. Besides, you're right. It's too early to say anything right now. Once night ain't for another week. And that's all the answer I need from him. As sentimental as it sounds, there's fulfillment in knowing another person you know won't take the same path you walked. It's not like it's over for me, though. I still have time. I could still come back. Do my own thing. Do what I really want to do. Surely once Papa recovers, once I'm done with everything, inside my phone, my f uh, inside my phone, inside my phone, my bag buzzes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works, right? Uh, sure. Golly, man. Inside my bag, my phone buzzes unexpectedly, breaking the pleasant afternoon lull. The screen shows Rose. Hey, Isabel, you at the office? Ha ha, very funny, Rose. I'm hanging up. <laughs> Don't, I'm kidding. BRC says the floor plan copies are ready for Miss McCullough to pick up. She states that as if it already explains everything. Then, out of the blue, she launches a long rant about the awful state of Luxem Luxburn's streets. All of which she says in a single breath that I can barely keep up and make out a single word. I stay quiet, if only to avoid becoming the next object in her frustration. She's similar to Becca in that regard. I'm stuck in horrendous traffic right now. Bloody stupid drivers. Well, she finally... When she has finally ran out of things to complain about and stops. What she says next still has none of what I'm hoping to hear from her. Just a quick mumbling plea for me to meet the Wright's interior designer in her stead. And and Anyway, I'll leave it to you. Bye. Thanks. Classic Rose. She ends the call without even asking for my input.